everybody, welcome to uh, this edition here of Snow Talk as we uh, get into uh, the end of the week here and into the upcoming weekend. Once again, snow not the headline, it's more of a late summer, early fall pattern really uh, that we are uh, facing here uh, across uh, most of wave country. We'll get into the thunderstorm action here in a second. As always the case, as far as the monitoring board goes, still keeping it as one system of interest and that is still the one around the 12th and 13th. That'll be later next week. I will discuss that toward the uh, end there of the uh, video. Sorry about that. Let me. I'm already short as it is, so I'm trying to give myself a little bit of room. All right. So uh, here we go with the latest uh, when it comes to temperatures this afternoon. We are now three away from tying the record of 80 set back in 2003. We're currently 77 as of this uh, blog taping, and that is with cloud cover. Now, the issue is there's enough breaks in the clouds that some heating is taking place, and that's why I think... If we don't do it today, we could do it again tomorrow. Tomorrow, we actually have a south wind in our favor to pump in warmer air, uh, so we can actually counterbalance the clouds if they're uh, thicker tomorrow. So there's a chance to hit 80 today and tomorrow. Wouldn't rule it out. Somewhere across wave country, that is possible. All right, so let's, uh, and that would put us in the record territory. Tomorrow's record, by the way, is 80 as well, set back in 1975. Record low warmth also is a factor. Uh, the record low uh, warm low, I should say, coming up for, uh, let's see, this would be for Friday morning as right now stands at 65 degrees. Now, if we go colder than 65 at some point throughout the day on Friday, and that would include Friday night, then that record is gone, and that could ruin it. So we may stay close to 70 all night Thursday night, but I think Friday night we will probably fall below that 65 degree record before midnight hits, if that makes sense. So Record warmth, possible, but uh, the cold front kind of will ruin that the way it's looking. All right, so here's a wider view of the setup. As we've mentioned, we've got this uh, gentle south flow today that's really going to ramp up tonight and tomorrow. The wind's going to pick up tomorrow night. You'll notice the difference there. Our system of interest is, uh, as far as the this week goes, as the uh, cold front and low pressure developing now across the four corners, producing heavy snow. It's going to roll on out with um, really... The main issue is how much of this warmth off the Gulf of Mexico is just going to tap into, and that's going to kick into the severe potential. Today, it's mainly a marginal risk in the front range of the Rockies. Tomorrow, they have moved the slight risk back down. Earlier today, it was through West Kentucky, including Paducah. Uh, now, they've moved it back down to Arkansas and to Texas. The next update on this, by the way, will be coming up uh, tonight, just after midnight. And the main reason is just the instability is always the case, and the front has slowed a little bit on timing. So while, um, you know, yes, we're getting into more of the daylight hours potentially for Friday, it actually is going to lessen the impact as far as how far east the stronger activity for Thursday night can make it, if that makes sense. So uh, I can understand why they did pull back on that. I, I agree with the uh, 65 west marginal. I think that's a good placement there. It makes sense. A lot of the data is indicating there's going to be a, a nice little vort max that's going to track from uh, northwest Kentucky through Indiana into Ohio, and it's going to be that corridor that I think will have the strongest winds associated with it. So I'd actually would draw it more like that if I had to redraw this map, uh, and then a lessening wind field to worry about here across uh, Kentucky. So not a big deal, but as always the case, we'll keep an eye on it. And then on Friday, they have this in the marginal risk, but they again updated this late last night when the, uh, the front uh, was again slow trying to hint at something may try to develop again or regenerate with the front for Kentucky Friday afternoon. I don't really see that happening right now. That is a possibility if it slows down even more. Wouldn't rule that out. If I got a feeling the next update, they'll kind of chop that along 65 for uh, Friday, but uh, we'll monitor. So here's Futurecast as we head throughout Thursday morning. Uh, it's going to be a warm morning tonight, early tomorrow. Temperatures again in the 60s. Uh, model saying 73, but just like today, these little breaks you see in the cloud cover couldn't roll out uh, enough to get us close to 80 for the afternoon. A few areas of drizzle, we've, we've seen that today. Uh, it's possible, but not a widespread event. All right, it's going to get really windy and really warm as we head into Thursday night, Friday morning. In fact, your ACs will probably stay on all night if you have them on still uh, Thursday night because it's going to stay warm all night long in the 70s. You're going to hear the wind outside. And then here comes the uh, front. And again, slow down slightly as we head into Friday morning, a band of thunderstorms. And again, I think you see the brighter reds really associated what I believe is going to be the Vortmax that's going to track into Ohio. So that wind field right in through here is where your strongest wind gust should be in a lesser degree to the south. And I think that's why the brighter reds are found on the north side of that line. Should clear by midday. 
and then the afternoon slowly working our way into a clearing trend the front the colder air behind the front by the way is going to be back here in the wabash it's going to take a while to get in that will not arrive until friday night so uh, even after the front goes by midday Friday, it'll stay warm for a few hours, even a little bit of sunshine to boot there. So not a bad day Friday, it's just the morning. We've got to watch a gusty line of storms. And those of you in Indiana, I think most at risk for any type of uh, stronger wind gusts that could get close, close to warning level in a few cases. Wind fields in the GFS aloft have uh, come down compared to yesterday, but you can really tell the difference. Yesterday we had the bright reds right over us showing the Vortmax tracking over our area, which would have enhanced our winds. Today, again, it's a little further to the north, closer to the track of the low, uh, which makes more sense, and uh, that's the reason why we're not that you know off the chain here about this. And instability, it's there, um, not off the charts. You don't need a, mu a lot for this time of the year. I would say 500 is uh, generous. You can reach 500 uh, joules uh, per uh, kilogram when it comes to the instability on capes and still get uh, enough height in the uh, thunderstorms to tap into those stronger winds but uh, again it's it just looks like a typical scenario we see in fall and and uh, late winter where it's it's not that huge an ordeal but uh, we'll see how it plays out as far as rainfall goes with this because it is a fairly narrow line there's not a lot of rain to talk about the model is not too excited anywhere from quarter to maybe half inch the way it's uh, beginning to trend now here is where things do change in the forecast you already know it's going to get cooler and drier for saturday and sunday the change is actually going to be later Sunday into Sunday night, and that is where the Euro is now trending with an area of low pressure. The GFS is showing it further to the south, almost like a uh, tropical low off the Carolinas. The Canadian is shown as well. The Euro shows the low pressure, but has a trough that extends out from it to the northwest, kind of a wave of moisture that kind of passes through here Sunday night through Monday. So I have added in a very small rain chance for Monday. I've increased the clouds for sure, added in a small rain chance until we see if this is going to be a trend or not. Uh, not going to go gun-ho in the rain chance for Monday just yet, but I have lowered the temperature too because of the clouds and the chance for that trough. So that is one change in the data today compared to what we saw yesterday that uh, is in effect there for Monday and uh, begins Sunday night. Then we got to deal with the item of interest, and that is the sole pressure moving in next week. Now here's the setup that a lot of you are uh, wanting to know about. The jet stream right now aloft, the pattern is very progressive. It's very active here across the northern tier of the United States and Canada. It's so progressive that these troughs dig in in the west, produce the snow in the Rockies, but the pattern pinches off the cold air. That's what that blue line is, the typical rain snow line, by the way, aloft. It pinches off the cold air and closes it off, and then everything moves on. So these troughs are not having the ability to dig in behind the low pressures and stay for a while because we are not in a blocking pattern setup. So what happens is you get impressive snow events in the west, and you get uh, strong low pressures ahead of that, producing strong uh, thunderstorms in some cases and warm weather. And then you get a pocket of cold air that kind of hangs on as long as it can. Dynamic cooling at its best on the upper low of that low pressure as it moves off. But we got to watch that because you can get some snowflakes or sleet out of these upper lows this time of the year after you get the heavy rain. So this is the uh, Euro for next Thursday. Windy and warm. Back in the 70s we go. Thunderstorms. And then the core... Of the upper low, you can see it gets pinched off, but it is hovering close to us in the Ohio Valley. That it will need to monitor that. I'm going to go with the chilly forecast on Friday the 13th. Oh my gosh, I just realized it's Friday the 13th that day. Anyway, it's kind of spooky. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> sorry, I got excited for a second. But uh, there was also uh, the building chance for maybe a this cold snap to try to have a little bit more staying power. We'll see if that happens or not. But right now, that's just the main item of interest we're going to track this within our range that we always look at. Here's the Canadian model brought to you by our friends over at Weatherbell Analytics. And it is showing the upper low as well. This is gonna be for uh, Friday morning the 13th. You can see it's cold and it moves over us uh, as we head into Friday afternoon. Again, this would suggest maybe some snowflakes mixed in. Not a big ordeal when it comes to this being an accumulating snow because too warm, the boundary layer temps mainly in the 40s for a lot of us here. So not a big deal. Could be even measurable snow for the Appalachians. Uh, that's a possibility. But for us, no. That is not going to happen with this system. I don't see any sign of that whatsoever. Uh, but maybe a cold rain, maybe a few flakes or sleep mixed in. That is possible. And that's why it remains just an item of interest. So for snow lovers, not that exciting of a forecast to talk about. For those of, the, those of you who love thunderstorms, you've got really two systems that uh, we'll get you excited. We've got one coming up, of course, Friday morning, and we got one uh, next Thursday. So, welcome to October. It's uh, becoming a wild month for us. All right, I've talked long enough. We'll see you today, beginning at five o'clock.